Okay, basically what you're looking at is the corpse of the original Windows 98 gaming computer that I built on this channel a little while back. So, what happened to it? Capacitors, that's what happened to it. So this is hardware from around 2004, and a lot of hardware from the early 2000s have this really common issue, known as the capacitor plague. Basically, there was just a bunch of faulty capacitors, and they all blew, and a lot of them would bulge. And so this motherboard is a victim of the capacitor plague, so it just stopped working, and stopped giving power to the CPU. And even the temporary Windows 98 gaming computer that I built, the power supply exploded on it last week. So I think it's time to build a new Windows 98 gaming computer with a better exterior and much improved hardware. There was one big issue that I had with the old Windows 98 gaming computer. The issue was the hardware was kind of just too new and it wouldn't work very well with Windows 98, making the system hang and all sorts of things that would just honestly make it a pain in the ass to use. So I'm going to need much more period accurate hardware. So here's what I ended up using. This is an Abbott ABBX6 Revision 2.0 Slot 1 motherboard. I chose this board because I got it for $15 out of a really old computer I found at a thrift store, so I just had this lying around. And it originally had a Slot 1 Celeron, but honestly, I don't think that'll do for this system. So I'm going to use a Slot 1 450MHz Intel Pentium 2. Now, I could have used an Intel Pentium 3 for this build, but the only one I had on hand was an 850MHz Pentium 3, and... Well, some sites say that it supports it, and some sites say it doesn't support it. When I actually put it in, I was able to get the system to post, but I was not able to set the clock speed correctly, so I ended up not using it. But if I can get my hands on a 650MHz Pentium 3, then I'll probably be able to use that. Now for the RAM. I went for 128MB of PC133 RAM. This is the same kit of RAM that I literally got from the $15 computer that I bought all these parts from, so I didn't really have much choice there, but I think in the future I will buy an extra kit of like maybe a gigabyte of RAM or something like that, because a gig of RAM would be nice to have in a computer like this. So for optical drives, I ended up using the exact same floppy disk drive that I had in the last system, but I did swap out the dual CD-ROM drive configuration I had last time with just a single reader, writer, and DVD-ROM drive. And I'm also going to throw in this 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive that I found at a thrift store for $20. I'm telling you, my luck is just insane with these things. And I'm pretty much using all the original add-in cards that I used in the last system, except I'm going to be adding in this USB 2.0 controller, just so I can have some extra USB ports. Spoiler warning, this little shit causes a lot of issues later. And for the case. It's a case. Nah, but for real though, this was a whole computer that I got for free off of a guy on next door, and when I saw this case, I knew this would be the perfect case for the new Windows 98 gaming computer. So it's time to start mounting things to the case. I had this PC speaker I wanted to install so I can get rid of this little crappy beeper that came pre-installed with this system, so I decided to install that first. Okay, I have PC speaker, but where does the PC speaker actually go? Nobody will ever know. Just slap the panel back on, it'll be completely fine. Next, I'm just going to install the optical drive, but there's nothing really interesting to look at here. Though, when I was done installing these drives, the front of the machine looked great. I was really happy with it. Oh, wow. Look at that front profile. That looks amazing. So, for storage, I'm using the same Maxer 250GB hard drive for the boot, and the second drive that's in there has Windows NT4 on it, because I don't have a dedicated Windows NT system. So now, all we need to do is start mounting the motherboard in the case, get our power supply installed, route some data cables, put the hard drives in, put in our required add-on cards, and we're good. Honestly, cable management was not high on the priority list, so it doesn't look the best, but hey, it's still a good system. Now let's turn this machine on for the first time, and I really hope there'll be no issues. Aw, oh, shit. Huh. Okay, so you usually get that beep code when there's no GPU detected. Okay, so the GPU wasn't being detected even though, um, um, so I unscrewed the GPU and I'm going to try to just like reseat it and see if that helps it at all. Okay, the same thing again. Huh. Okay, so I took that GPU out and I found this old Trident card. It's an ISA card, but I was hoping that I could get to use this card to see if I can even get the system to post so I can actually go into the BIOS and do all the configuration that I have to do. And then I'll figure out what's going on with that card. I think that card is dead, because I know the board is working. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, that worked. Okay. 
And you, wow, this GPU's text mode is very slow. Okay, delete, enter, setup. Oh my god. I don't know why, but that just pleases me. I like how everything like slowly draws itself on the screen. So I got into the BIOS and I was setting everything up. I set up the CPU clock speed and also the boot devices. And then I connected the computer to the Windows NT drive and I booted it up to NT. Just so I can see if the system would even boot to anything. And it did. I mean, uh, there's Windows NT. Okay, so let's take out this Trident card. Quick. Okay, so the one thing I wanted to check, because like, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't come along that well on camera, but there's some gunk in there. I don't know if you can see that. What if I just like jam it, like jam the card in there? Just to jam it in there. Make sure it's actually in there. There you go. No way that worked. What the fuck? I was not expecting that to work. Wow. And we have video drivers too. Now that we got our issues fixed, it's time to install Windows 98. I'll be booting straight into the Windows 98 CD because I already made a FAT32 partition and I formatted it just a couple days earlier. So I was able to get into the Windows 98 setup and everything went absolutely swimmingly. Until it didn't. Yeah, so whenever it was trying to find plug and play devices, it just kept freezing at this exact point in the setup. No matter how many times I just went into the BIOS, tried to reconfigure things, or just, just restarted the computer and tried to restart the setup, it would always freeze. So I got a little bit curious. Windows 98 installer kept freezing, so I took out the USB controller. Because from what I remember, I think it has something weird to do with that. So let's just fire up the installer again and see what happens. <laughs> no way that worked. So yeah, it was literally just a USB controller that was causing an issue with the Windows 98 installer. Aside from that little issue, Windows 98 installed pretty much perfectly. And I am one step closer to being able to start installing drivers and games. I never really noticed it too much, but I actually really like the little window that comes up when you first install Windows 98. And now for drivers. Drivers. Remember that little USB controller that we had to uninstall? while well, we were installing Windows 98 because it just wasn't working. Yeah, that little fucker's back for round two. So then I got the driver install disk for the controller and I was installing it. And then, I don't know what happened, but right when I restarted the computer, it just failed to boot. I just couldn't install- I just couldn't boot to Windows 98. And what I mean by that is the Windows 98 splash screen would be here, but it would never actually go out of this. I even tried booting it up in safe mode and I got the same result. It got stuck on the Windows 98 splash screen and it never got anywhere. So I had to reinstall it all over again. At this point, I was just getting tired of the crap, so I just took a three day break and came back. I finally got Windows 98 fully reinstalled again, and now I can start installing drivers and installing games actually this time. And I am definitely saying goodbye to that USB controller for good. I'm not really going to show driver installs because that's boring. But now, since we have a fully working Windows 98 desktop with drivers installed, now it's time to start installing and playing games. So for the games, I decided to play Half-Life 1 first. <laughs> I had a little interesting moment with the video settings. It defaulted to software rendering mode with an absurdly low resolution. 400 by 300? What is blood waffling about? Half-Life doesn't take that much to run anyway, so I pretty much expected this to run just fine. And next, I wanted to run some Quake 3 Arena, and this pretty much ran smoothly, though I had a really bad freeze in the beginning of the match, but after that, everything was completely fine. Next is Counter-Strike 1.0. This game isn't really demanding to run either, but as a fan of the Counter-Strike series, I just wanted to play Counter-Strike 1.0 on some original hardware. And that pretty much concludes the new Windows 98 gaming PC build. I've been playing with this thing for like a couple days now, and all the issues I was having before with the old computer that I built, they're all gone. I've been having a really smooth experience with this thing. Stay tuned for more retro tech content in the future.